Okay. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good morning. Is it still morning? Not, not yet. 12.07. Just missed. I apologize. It is Groundhog Day. We are in the submarine. But uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Appreciate you guys being on here. Uh, this was, uh, for us, practice five. We've had four really challenging practices in the last, um, I would say, four in the last five days. Today was a big walkthrough, what we refer to as our mental sweat day. What I mean by mental sweat is we line up our ones with two stacked behind them, three stacked behind them. Our, uh, our look team's on the other side, and we run through periods of offensive and defensive situational football from end of game plays to um, coming out plays, uh, fourth down plays, uh, defending such plays as well. All of our special teams units and situational stuff backed up in their territory, uh, defending fakes, you name it, a lot of that today. So it was a day where uh, we feel we gained a lot of ground. Uh, certainly productive and looking forward to getting on the pads again tomorrow, going full pads and actually doing some tackling. So uh, with that being said, questions, please. We're going to open it up, Coach, with uh, James Krapia from the Oregonian. Mario, uh, one personnel bid and one for uh, going forward. Uh, to the offensive line, I didn't want to, again, didn't want to read too much into guys you didn't mention, but you didn't hear about Sam Putasi, but saw he was at practice at least last week and, didn't hear about Chris Randazzo. Just what was the status of each of them? And for whenever you scrimmage, will uh, Anthony and Tyler go live? Okay. Sam Patassi should be mentioned because he's done a really good job. Sam Patassi has shown that he's very versatile. He is healthy for the first time in a long time. He's weighing 300 pounds. And he's, very, he's worked extremely hard on his body. And uh, his versatility knowledge of the offense has been very beneficial to us, moving him around and him helping the young guys adjust. Chris Rondazzo will opt out for the season, okay? So that's the update on him. In terms of going live on the quarterbacks, we will not go live on the quarterbacks. Next question goes to Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Hey, Mario, is, uh, is that opt out because of coronavirus concerns? And what have you learned about your team through five practices that you didn't know a week ago? Yes, it is a COVID. Uh, it is a COVID opt-out, so he'll be returning and joining us. Uh, he's in classes now, but he rejoins the team and activities in the springtime. Um, what I've learned about our team, things that we thought were there already, toughness, resiliency, very talented, very young. We're reteaching everything. Uh, our coaches, our team leaders, our older guys, just nothing is taken for granted. It's a restart button situation every single day. The focus, the emphasis, and the definition of culture and leadership is at the forefront. You know, when we could talk about scheme a lot, and I know you had a chance to speak with our coordinators, they jumped it into a little, they jumped into it a little bit. But more than anything, I see a team that's just really determined to elevate things, to eliminate any type of entitlement, to put all 19 um, accomplishments behind us because there's a lot more, uh, like they say, there's, there's more meat on the bone. So very forward thinking group and one that we will continue to challenge and we are challenging them. We are, and they know that we practice a certain way. We're going to be physical. And, um, that's what I've learned from them so far. And, uh, but they're a great bunch to be around. They're as, as fun, as enthused, as energetic as a, as a group of guys I've ever been around. Next question goes to AJ Jacobson from rivals. I think, Coach, you know, oftentimes the guys that are tra that transfer in, like JC transfers, graduate transfers, you expect stuff sooner rather than later out of guys like that that have limited time. You have four of them this year. I was wondering about T.J. Bass, Jordan Happel, uh, Anthony Brown, Bennett Williams. Can you just talk about, you know, just to the extent you can after five practices, where those guys are? Yeah, no, that's a great point. You expect them, right? If you're going to try to bring a guy that's a grad transfer or a junior college player into your program, you're doing it because they already are physically mature and you certainly want to target guys that are mentally mature. That from a cultural standpoint, they understand that they are joining a new family. They have to adapt. They have to come full, full way, full throttle to make it work. What have I seen from them so far? TJ Bass is going to be an outstanding football player. He is powerful. 
He's massive. He's smart, tough, diligent. All those things have been extremely impressed with him. I could say the same thing about the rest of the guys. We'll start with Anthony Brown. You know, you can imagine a quarterback being a quarterback coming off an injury like he did, getting here during the time that he did, not being able to rep with the football team, but yet to be where he's at from a schematic knowledge standpoint and, um, and function the way he is, it's a testament to him and his upbringing and his DNA. He's been excellent. Um, who else do we have? My man, Happel. I mean, it's, he, he kind of knows the defense a little bit, very comfortable with the calls. I think that he, besides experience, knowledge of the scheme, Another guy that's made of the right stuff, you know, in the short time that he's been here. And, you know, you, you don't want to speak too much until guys have been here for a while. But everything I've seen le lends to us believing that we have found ourselves a guy that's going to be a major contributor and a guy that fits in with the culture extremely well. All these guys are looking to fit in. I don't see anyone trying to take it over, make it about them. They're making it about the team. And Bennett Williams the same way. You know, Bennett was an extremely um, – I guess he had a lot of accolades as a freshman when he was out playing in the, the Big Ten a little while back. And uh, he flashes what we think is going to be one heck of a football player. Smart, um, really good tackler, great balance and body control, instincts, uh, ability to play man, zone, um, good blitzer, okay, good in coverage. Uh, all in all, just really, really pleased with those four guys. Next question, Eric Scopel from 247 Sports. Hey, Coach. Uh, first, uh, an update on Samson, if he's made a determination there and if he's playing. And then, and then secondly, uh, James mentioned it, but when will the first scrimmage be and, and kind of what do you want to get out of that? Yeah, there's no update on Samson, but I'll get that to you when we do have an update. The first scrimmage will be on Saturday. What will it entail? It'll entail everything. Our, um, our, our last bit of... Being able to play a full game type install takes place in tomorrow's practice. Uh, it will be a physical practice. You know, we will practice all those scenarios we mentioned earlier, uh, short yards and goal line and, you know, the tight red zone, some of the high red zone stuff as well. End it with two minute um, and certainly come back on Friday and work some similar situations as well so that on Saturday we can, we can play football, get everybody off the field, get our coaches up in the boxes, put on the headsets and play ball, call a game as if it was a live game. So that's going to be the scenario. Um, everybody will get repetitions. It'll be a, a large volume, I would say, from a play count standpoint. And we will grade it just like a game and certainly start uh, just taking that next step towards the second week of camp. We look at this week as week one of camp plus the Friday, Saturday of last week. That's what we look at it as. We'll scrimmage again the following uh, Saturday, and um, we'll probably have a a mini scrimmage sort of uh, speak or so to speak on the Wednesday, uh, ten days leading up to the first game. Next question, Tyson Alger from the Athletic. Hey Mario, you you've known the Sewell family for quite some time now, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I think anybody who's talked to their dad and knows their dad knows that's kind of what makes them tick. But just having Noah in camp now and, and getting to know him a bit, like how is he different than, than, than Penny was and, and, and maybe just some, some what you've noticed from him so far? Hard not to smile when you bring up that name, that family. Um, ironically, was on the phone last night with Arlene Sewell and, and Gabe Sewell and all I told them, I guess the best way to summarize it, I said, well, I can give you confirmation. He's definitely a Sewell because he plays a game a certain way. He is a... Uh, He's what you want in a player, um, you know, a leader, you know, your own son, teammate. I mean, he's uh, – and he's learning a lot, you know. Obviously, he doesn't have it all down yet. No freshman does, but uh, physical, tough, explosive, relentless, wants to learn, eager to learn, um, owns up to a false read or a mistake in coverage or something like that. Um, the expectations for him, you can't set him high enough because he has those for himself already. So – can't wait to turn him loose tomorrow and watch him do what, what Sewell's do. Next question goes to Matt Prem from 247 Sports. Hi, Mario. Uh, curious, where does Logan Sogopalu fit within the offensive line and kind of the expectation of him coming off that mission? And then uh, looking at TJ Bass, he had a wide range of, of schools that offered him various uh, you know, schematic uh, teams, Washington State's air raid, your guys' offense. 
does that allow him maybe to, to play multiple spots? I was kind of surprised you included him as a, as a tackle player. Yeah, no, no question. Those are two good questions. Logan, Logan fits in perfectly with what we do. Logan went on a mission, and Logan's a naturally big guy. And on his mission, he got a little bit bigger. Uh, but he's, again, he's, he was born to be big now, okay? I mean, uh, he's, they talk about big bones. Um, you've seen his videos when he's squatting, like, I think he had a house on his back. I'm not sure what he did. But he's lost a probably 35 to 40 pounds, and he's moving, and he's moving really well. And he's a guy that just knocks out the A's and B's and at the same time can slide his feet and anchor and pass pro. And he's smart and he has multiple position value. He's at center. He's at guard. He's going to play this year. He's going to contribute. You know, he's in there. He's fighting along with all those other guys in the interior as we're trying to find the best mix. And I would love to say we've settled on what we're doing with those guys up front um, because of the type of season and, and dealing with, you know, the potential issues that COVID can bring. You need to. You need to get guys – um, you got to settle on a starting group, but you also got to make sure that you're prepared to handle anything. TJ Bass is, uh, I guess, the best comparison. Reminds all of us of Shane Lemieux is what he is. And big, physical, explosive. Um, he is not one of these push mall guys. This guy is a legitimate, like, powerful, explosive, knock you back, finish you type of guys. But he's very talented because he's got great range, and that's why we've thrown him out there at tackle which he's played in junior college, and he has excelled. He's excelled at left tackle. He's excelled at right tackle. We have a special player there. He, re he reminds me of uh, the guys that were just here, that just left, where I think if we threw him a ball today and said, hey, get in that center, I think we wouldn't skip a beat. So that's how much confidence uh, we have in him. So, And the best part about it is the culture part, where he's to every meeting 10 minutes early. Uh, he's always staying late. So great uh, great addition to this, this program. Next up, James Krippia from the Oregonian. Mario, to go to some of your quarterback uh, competitions in your coaching uh, history, you had Wesley Carroll at FIU, but he sat and, and got to learn the offense before becoming the starter. You were at Alabama when Blake Sims held on to it, when Coker came in, and everyone in that region thought Coker was going to get the job that year. Do you see anything analogous to your past quarterback competitions that you were on staffs with to the situation you're in now? You know, I have never thought of it that way. I may end up in some kind of scenario that I've experienced before, but I see two guys that are certainly ahead of the younger guys. I see a very talented young group of guys, and I think Saturday is going to be great for them to just let them play. And I see two guys that are older, one with experience as having played live downs and another one that has, that has waited and sat behind a guy who's been unbelievable here and has played against a great defense that are just uh, – they're really good players. Uh, you hate to really just go on and on about a quarterback that hasn't played in your system yet and Coach Moorhead's offensive system, who's the guy's a great quarterback coach. I mean, he really, the details of all he does is awesome. Um, we just want to keep them hungry, keep them competing, and make them understand and feel like their, their competition is no different than the ones going on at left tackle or at, you know, Mike Linebacker. It's just... We do things a certain way, so we expect to uh, to find uh, the right the right move, the right fit to move forward. Next question goes to AJ Jacobson from Rivals. Coach, you know I've realized this very early in camp and everything, but have any guys caught your eye? Perhaps guys that we wouldn't don't know that much about um, have caught your eyes in these first five sessions. Yes, actually, on the way in here, I was writing some things down. Some guys I'd like to mentioned that are really important. I think uh, some guys you know about, but they need to be mentioned. The leadership of Nick Pickett and Verone McKinley have been something that's really been special to watch, and it's got to continue to grow and improve, and it can never let up. I see Jamal Hill, Steve Stevens, um, really just jumping out on tape, understanding what they're doing, playing fast, making plays. Um, I see the young defense alignment that came, were part of last year's class. Between Keon, you know, Dorless, uh, Christian Williams, I, mean, I think all three of those guys have provided some really good snaps, have been disruptive and hard to block, understand what they're doing. Um, good to see Adrian Jackson out there and, and, and have watching Adrian grow and mature. And now he's at a point where he has an opportunity to prove himself. 
um, as a guy that can be consistent and depended upon. And he knows that, you know, he's got an opportunity and it's going to be on him to do so. We feel he's going to do it as well as Isaac Townsend. This guy's exploded in the weight room. So has Braden Swinson, who's been in a short amount of time. Um, love watching what Cyrus has done with his body as well as Travis. You know, CJ, CJ, CJ has taken another massive step in development. Cyrus and Travis look, man, they just, these guys have changed, just gotten better and better. You guys talked to Alex Forsythe yesterday. He's the guy's natural leader, respected, loved by all those guys. It goes on and on. I think George Moore has taken a massive step as a player. I think the wide receiver room, just overall, under the tutelage of Ryan McClendon, has been just one of the most impressive things that I've seen. The accountability, the level of toughness, the way those guys are being held to a standard where there is no wiggle room. So, you know, I could go on and on and on. The young linebackers, you know, all those guys we just talked about, Noah, but Justin Flo, Jackson LaDuke have been awesome under the leadership of Drew Mathis. So, guys, I'll, I'll stop with all that there because I'll go on and on and on. I wrote a lot of notes on the way in. But since you guys aren't here to see it, I want to provide you with some information. That is that, – that's, that's real. You know, the kickers, the kickers and the punters, I mean – that ball is now just, there's lift, you know, there's consistency and hang time. There's consistency and ball placement, which helps your coverage teams. David Davis, I can't say enough about him. Most unselfish guy I've ever seen. Handles a lot, manages a lot. Proud of him. Tough, 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 tough. I mean, in every sense of the word, so. We got time for maybe one, two more, maybe. Uh, let's go with Tyson Alger from The Athletic. With, with Flo and Sewell, they're obviously different positions than what Kayvon is, but they were similar talent levels coming in as freshmen. I mean, can you at all compare to just readiness-wise? I mean, obviously, it would be kind of crazy to expect somebody to come out and have eight or nine sacks like Kayvon did last year, but you definitely saw with him last year, once it clicked for him, he was, you know, either your best or second best defender on, on that roster last year, just because they're similar talents. Like, where, where are they kind of on that spectrum? Well, you know, KT had the benefit of going through the winter program, the fourth quarter program, spring ball. That's a lot. You know, these guys had, you know, unfortunately, you know, dealing with the, the, the COVID, the pandemic, that just shut everything down. And I would say that I don't think it's going to slow them down. I think you're going to see a couple of really impactful, impactful guys. And I would throw a guy like Chris Hudson as a guy for you guys to watch as well. His explosiveness is uh, – Special guy, and when we put a lot on him because when you're a freshman wide receiver, it's it's going to require all the little things that go with being a great player. But again, um, Johnny Johnson, Jalen Red have done a great job tutoring him. You know, they really have done a great job getting him to understand how we do things around here. Last question goes to Ryan Thorburn, the register guard. Mario, a lot of times during camps, the offense starts out ahead of the defense, and then once they start running the same plays over and over again, it it flips. Um, with so much newness on offense and such a talented, you know, the list of talent you just mentioned on defense, is it mm -hmm. kind of the opposite or, or what have you seen from that competition back and forth so far? Well, the defense is ahead, but there is enough back and forth that lends you to believe that we have a good football team. You know, if it was an absolute just butt whooping every single day, that's, that's when you're staying up at night because you're either phenomenal on one side or really poor on the other. You don't see that yet. You know, they, uh, the defense is definitely ahead. There's more maturity there. But there is some really good play on the offensive side as it's gelling. So, um, and every day there's something new. There's progress in some form or fashion. Really exciting to see how that's going. And you see, you have a couple of quarterbacks that have command of it in the short time they've been here. That makes a huge difference. So, all in all, it's it's been a very competitive, a very physical, a very intense camp, and uh, they've handled a lot. And that's why today was important to kind of shut down the engines to be able to recoup and get ready to go tomorrow and, uh, and bring it. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Okay, have a blessed day. Stay safe.